Ladies and gentlemen, fellow students and competitors, good afternoon. My name is Stella Hopkins and I'm from Ditchman Park School. The Ditchman Park School team is ecstatic to have the opportunity to speak for you today in such a prestigious competition. We would also like to thank Church's College for hosting the event and making us feel so welcome. I'm delighted to announce that speaking for you today is Molly Steele from Church's College, um, who will be enlightening you on the subject of are we growing into a, a ever more angry society, which I'm sure will be both informative and compelling. My fellow pupil, Alfred Muir, will be the questioner and will be asking some intriguing questions about Molly's chosen subject, opening up a further path for debate. I would like to pass over to Molly. Remember, you have five minutes to speak on your chosen subject. Good luck and we'll have questions after. Are we growing into an ever more angry society? I think that generally the immediate response would be yes, we are growing angrier and it is having a negative impact on our society. But I believe that the more we look into this topic, the more you'll question the effects of anger and if it really is a bad thing. Now, you may think I sound crazy. Molly, how can anger be a positive thing? Well, listen to me and I'll prove it. The stigma surrounding anger seems to be a negative one, but anger is a natural response to feeling attacked, deceived, frustrated, or treated unfairly. Everyone gets angry sometimes. It's a part of being human. Every mind, the mental health charity, talks about how anger isn't always this bad emotion, and sometimes it can be useful. For example, anger can help us to identify problems or issues we have, and it can help us to defend ourselves in dangerous situations. I believe that anger is most useful in soliciting change. Feelings of anger arise due to how we interpret and react to certain situations. Everyone has their own triggers for what makes them feel angry, but some common ones include situations in which we feel threatened or attacked, frustrated or powerless, or likely being treated unfairly. And although I am here to speak to you today about how anger can be a good thing, I am not going to deny anger can Anger can also be very destructive, especially when it starts to harm people. How you behave when you're angry depends on how well you're able to identify and cope with your feelings, as well as how you've learned to express them. I need you to recognise that my speech is not an attempt to gloss over some of the harsh realities that anger can lead to. For example, war and terrorism are prominent threats in today's society. And now people seem to be becoming angrier, angry at each other, at politics and at the world around them. According to a study held at Beihan University in China, rage was the emotion most likely to spread from person to person. Psychologists have known for some time that moods do spread and these moods have serious effects on other people. The internet seems to, seem to have this ability to magnify negative emotions rather than highlighting more positive ones. This could be linked to people being more comfortable online expressing their anger than they do in person due to the anonymity of online communication. People often get angry about things or concepts that are incredibly important to them, and anger about injustices can lead to rebellion. Protests and marches are compelling examples of this, and there is historical evidence of these soliciting change. All sorts of protests and marches happen because people got angry, and they demonstrate how people use their anger for good. A powerful example of peaceful protest happened on August the 28th, 1963, and proved that protests don't need to be violent to be powerful. Martin Luther King, along with others, led a march from the from Washington Monument to the Lincoln Memorial. The gathered masses stood peacefully for hours as musicians and speakers appealed for the equal rights of American of African Americans and all minorities. Thanks to the powerful words of civil rights champions, the march went down in history as the most convincing event in the movement that led to the successful passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. An example of a violent protest happened on June 28, 1969, following a police raid on New York's Stonewall Inn. At the time, Stonewall was a mafia-owned bar that offered a safe place for an assortment of people and was most popular among LGBT members of the community as well as drag queens and homeless youth. It was shut down by the police due to a citywide crackdown on the homosexual life, and the inn was stormed by police. Bar patrons refused to 
cooperate. And Marsha P. Johnson, a trans female, was one of the first patrons to resist. Violence ensued, with 13 people being arrested and many more hospitalised. And although the raid did not start this immediate discussion on gay rights, it is considered by some to be the most important event leading to the gay liberation movement and the modern fight for LGBT rights in the United States. Now, both of these events have something in common. The people starting them wanted change. To those doubting the relevance of any of these speeches, I ask you, where would we be today if these people had not got angry? You may think anger is a bad thing, but without it, humans would not be where we are today. So I believe, yes, we are growing into an ever more angry society, but that is because we are striving for change and questioning those who believe to be wrong. We may be angry, but it's not a bad thing. inspiring speech. I thoroughly enjoyed it myself. Now, in medieval times, people were extremely angry against Charles I for suppressing them so peasants had, you know, very little rights. Do you then think that our anger, we are getting angrier, or do you think our anger is perhaps evolving to something slightly different? Like I said in my speech, I feel that anger is being channeled in a progressive way, and we can channel any anger we have at injustices into more positive lights. For example, with the whole situation with the sexual harassment in the workplace, the Me Too movement has been able to channel all of this anger about what's been happening into a more progressive, and we are starting to see things being changed around us because of this anger. So, you say anger can be channeled in a progressive and peaceful manner. So, would you then still consider it anger? I feel that anger is always going to be related to a feeling when you feel injustice feel like some of you are being wronged and that can be expressed in many different ways. Some people express it and use it and for a positive thing and do something like speaking about it. But some people could end up using it for quite negative situations like war and terrorism like I mentioned. And that's the things that we need to try and avoid, avoid because they are never going to help our society progress. That's a very good point. Um, but then for instance, in India, when Gandhi uh, peacefully took back India from the Britons without them, you know, the Indians having any violence at all. So, would you then consider these peaceful, you know, protests and stuff, would you, would you consider them to be able to anger or passion? I feel that anger and passion go hand in hand. You can't be angry about something without having a passionate feeling towards it. And I feel that that's why the, they can be considered quite similar even though passionate, if you're passionate about something, I feel that it's often a more positive thing, whereas you can also be angry about the exact same topic the situation. Well, I was sort of thinking, uh, you say we can progress with anger and that you can use positivity and stuff. However, I can think of many instances where anger, you know, has been used and instead is come across making a rash decision rather than a more informative decision to progress our society in a good way. Uh, the fact that anger can be used is usually used in a rash way, and rash decisions are made where that things occur. Okay, I understand that, sorry. I feel that when anger is put into protests and marches, a lot of thinking and planning has often gone into it, and that's why those things have been like a catalyst for change and allowed things to change and progress. Is that Thank you. I have no, question, no further questions. Because at the moment, even though we see things like war and terrorism, 
there is a lot of backlash to it and people aren't happy that it's going on and people are trying to protest and go against that. But as soon as they start to become more prominent, that's when there is an issue and we need to start to find how we view ourselves as a society. Uh, you talk about the benefits and the negatives of using anger, but do you think that society can survive without it entirely? No, I feel that anger will allow us to have this change and that's why it's such a vital part of our society because nothing ever happens and decisions aren't made without people having some passion, like you said, or some anger for it. And that means that we can progress, but only when it's in a positive and being channeled positively rather than negative.